Welcome to another video, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you. We are on day three of this 31 day Proverbs challenge. And this is one of my favorite, literally, chapters because I always quote this verse. Okay. I've always quote these verses in this chapter. You know, trust in thy Lord with all thy heart, lean not on thy own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and he shall direct your path. Okay. So this is such an amazing chapter, and this is actually one of those coffee mug verses that you see on like every coffee mug. You see them on the refrigerator magnets, right, or out on people's walls when you enter their homes, those that are believers. So I'm excited to share this. We're going to really just dive in and talk a bit about just this chapter, break it down uh, verse to verse. Okay, so it says it right here, and I'll just share my screen. It says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. This is the power of just being guided by the Lord, right? It says the length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. It literally says, hey, if you write these on a tablet on your heart in the sight of God, (laughs) you will find favor and high esteem. Wow. And here's a verse, verse five. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. It says in all your ways, in every way, in everything you do, and God will direct your path path. It's going to be hard and tough sometimes to just surrender, right? Surrender certain things, parts of our lives, relationships, connections, different uh, parts of our portfolio and just our lives. And, And God says, if you can acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. And I like this because it says in the, in the next verse, it says, do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. See, it's not our wisdom. It's God's wisdom, not in our own eyes, not through our own perspective. It's through God's perspective. That's why we always got to renew our mind. We got to see it through the lens of God, right? And then here here it is, because we talked about the fear of the Lord in uh, chapter one. It says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Remember, it's like a healthy fear, right? It's not the same uh, type of fear that this world gives you, but it's a fear of giving deep reverence and respect and honor to God, okay? Verse eight, it says, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Praise God. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. I know a lot of people like to use this for like offering as well. So it kind of gives us a pretty much how, how we should be able to say, hey, you know what, God, this is yours. This is yours. And it talks about the first fruits, right? The first fruits of all your increase, praise God, of all your profits, okay? So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. There's an overflow when you're with the Lord. And it talks about this new wine, this fresh presence, this fresh anointing, right? A fresh way to see God. This is that new wine from the true vine, okay? Which is Jesus, Um, verse 11, it says, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction for, for whom the Lord loves. He corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. We want to find wisdom and we want to be able to gain understanding. I always pray for an increase of understanding in my life, right? Increase of discernment, increase of wisdom, increase of understanding daily. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver. See, we talked about this in chapter two. So it's kind of like going to going over. It's like, who is her, right? It's talking about wisdom again. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. Okay, so now we we see it. I I talk about this. We talked about this in the book of Acts in in Acts chapter eight, where Peter talked to the sorcerer. And Peter was like to, to Simon, the sorcerer was like, your, your money going to perish with you, <laughs> right? Just because you think that you can buy the gift of God. And in reality, it's saying, hey, this, it, what we can gain through the wisdom of God is far greater, is bigger, 
Okay, because this dude, Simon the sorcerer, tried to buy the, 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 the Holy Spirit, the power of God. But he said, you can't buy this. God looks at the heart, right? Verse 15, she is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. It's saying all the things that you desire can't even compare to the wisdom from the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, length, of the, length of days is in her right hand and left hand riches and honor. Her, way, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She's a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Wow. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul. This sound wisdom becomes life to your soul, life to your mind, your will, and emotions, and grace to your neck. There's something powerful because they talked about this is the second time they brought up the neck, right? Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Sweet like honey. Verse 25, do not be afraid of a sudden terror nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes for the Lord will be your confidence and will, be, and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. God's saying, hey, we got the power, right? Through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, but it is up to us. It is a decision. It is a choice to follow Jesus. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it to you when you have it with you. Wow. This kind of reminds me of the, that, that saying. It's like, why hold off to um, tomorrow what you can do today, right? It's like, hey, if we need deliverance. We can get that done. If God tells you to pray, why say, oh, I'll pray for you later. Why not just pray now, right? Verse 29, do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. No need for revenge. No need for, and obviously revenge is because you, someone did something bad to you. We don't need that. We don't need that heart in heart, right? And it says, hey, if no one has done anything harm to you, no need to strive. No need to cause this person harm. 31, do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. People that do you wrong, that do you harm, you don't, you don't need to toil and, and, and entertain any of that, right? For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, right? But his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. You do not want to be unrighteous with the Lord because the curse is upon the households of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the just. He blesses the home that are righteous. And righteousness is just being right with God, obeying his commandments. And that's what we're breaking down here. That's, that's what the Lord is it's constantly saying, obey, 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 right? The fear of the Lord, being able to be right with God. And then the last two verses says, surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The book of James, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And I like this last verse, how it ends off. But the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Shame shall be the legacy of fools. I, you know, it's interesting because I think about legacy, right? Legacy is planting seeds in a garden that you'll never see. Legacy is planting seeds in a garden that you will never see. That's what a true legacy is. It's doing things for the generations to come. And it says, hey, it literally said that in the last verse. It says, but shame will be the legacy of fools and the wise shall inherit glory. I need that glory, right? The glory of God, that Shekinah glory, right? It's like that, that light and we could, we, could, we could do a whole nother study on glory, but everything that I got from this chapter, and we always quote that verse, right? The trust in the Lord with all thy heart. The more I say that, the deeper the revelation comes. The more you speak it, the more it starts to speak to you. And this chapter is all about being guided by God. It says a guidance for the young. 
we need to be guided by the Lord. And it's so interesting how, you know, I think about this, how the Lord goes from the, the fear of the Lord, why we need to fear, because that's going to allow us to have honor, respect for him. And then it talks about the wisdom of God. And we just talked about that, how it referred wisdom to her, right? And then as we go in here, it's like, okay, now we know the wisdom. Now we need to be guided by that wisdom. And how do we be guided? I think key verse is to trust in God. Let God guide you. Let God lead you. And, in all, and that's why it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He is like that good, good father that wants the best for us, that knows the best for us and wants us to be guided in all our decisions. We might stumble, we might fall, but he is known as the good shepherd. You know, I always think about the shepherd to the sheep. When the sheep, you know, they need to be guided by the shepherd and protected from like the wolves and all the enemies and all these things trying to take out the sheep. And he is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, right? And he's out here just guiding us, guiding us, but it's up to us to follow him as he's leading us out. And sometimes I always think about this, this picture, you guys that have pictures, right? This is why we need to be guided by God, because you see some sheep, they'll be straying away. And, and then you see the sheep that's literally stuck in the bush and they can't even get themselves out. But God loves us so much that he's willing to guide us. That's why we need to listen to him. And he'll, t he'll literally take us when we fall, when we stumble, <laughs> if we're stuck in the bush and he'll take us and put us back on path. And then we keep walking, we keep getting led. And that's why he says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he shall direct your path in Jesus name. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to be doing this Proverbs today, Proverbs today. Check out the other videos if you guys haven't. Don't feel bad if you're missing out or if you're just seeing these now, you can just stick with it. You can start your day one today, however you want. Uh, but we're doing a Proverbs today to, uh, this month. And yeah, I mean, this is something you guys can use throughout. We're always going to get new revelations as we, as we study the book of Proverbs. So let me know below what you guys thought, your favorite verses below, new revelations in the comments. And I'll see you guys here very soon for number four tomorrow. God bless you guys. Take care in Jesus name.